Hello everyone and welcome back to another lesson with me, Emil from ProGuitar.com and today we're gonna look at a reharmonization once again using something called, the, called back cycling. So what is back cycling? Well I'm gonna tell you in this video and this is actually one of my favorite ways to find new harmonies and to add some interesting chords to your songs. And sometimes when you have a simple song, you might want to spice it up a little bit, add some harmony, add some chords to make it more interesting. Uh, and that's what we're going to take a look at today using the back cycling uh, concept. So, so for this lesson, I'm going to use a song called Coming Around the Mountain. I think you've heard that. Everyone knows that song. And the reason I picked that song is because it's super simple and it's easy to use a simple song like that to explain a concept that you can use in you know any tune even if it's much more advanced than this uh, classic old country song uh, and it's also a good thing with this song is it's uh, oh, public domain so I won't be getting any copyright strikes from this one so <laughs> that's why I'm using it as well I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be honest uh, so what we're gonna do here I'm, I have my iPad in front of me and I'm gonna use that to explain and it's much easier, simpler for me to explain using the iPad because then I can write out what I'm thinking and you can clearly see where I put the chords and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm just gonna, you probably heard the song, right? It goes like this. If I will play that song as a solo finger style arrangement using only the 1 4 5 chord, simple standard progression, it would probably sound something like this. That's the 5 chord. 4 5. So that's, that's just st standard simple progression and I'm gonna uh, just write that uh, song out real quick on the I iPad and we'll take it from there, here we go. <laughs> There we go, so that's the melody. Now I'm gonna just write out the chords uh, above uh, the simple chord progression that I just played. Here we go. C major, C here as well, and then we have a G7 right here, and then C, and then F, that's the four chord, and then G. You can, you can play C here actually, like C and then G here. But I'm I'm choosing a simple simplest way possible, playing G major here, and then that's the five chord. You can write G seven if you want, and then back to C major. So that's the standard progression. Um, So that's the song and now we're gonna look at some reharmonization tools here we're gonna take a look at the back cycling process <laughs> so now we want to add some chords so as you can see we have a super super simple harmony a uh, simple simple melody and I just want to add some interest I, I want to add some chords and here is a cool technique that you can use it's called back cycling and what we do is we take a look at the progression and as you can see, we have many bars where we have the same chords all over. And this is great because we have so many chords that we can add. And I, I'm going to show you how. So if you, for, for instance, if you take a look at the five chord in, on the fourth line, the, the, the G7 right here, uh, what you can do is that you can approach that chord going to the five of that chord, the five of five, so to speak, because the G7 is the fifth chord of, of C major. And we can add a chord before we go to the G chord, we can add the five 
of the five chord. So what's, how do we find that? So what's the five of five? Well, we just look at the G note. It's right here on the third fret of the E string. Whereas the fifth note, you can actually think of the major scale and, and just count to five. You will find the five of the five, the five of that, that, that G chord, and that's D. So I just count to five, playing the major scale. But a simple way to do it on the guitar is just simply playing a, a power chord. You probably know how to find, find the fifth of, of, of a note, right? So that's G. Just go up a fifth. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. You know, that, 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 is, the, that is the pitch. That's the interval, a fifth interval. So you can just find it simply by just playing a power chord. So that's the fifth, the five of the five in this case. D leads to G. So what can we do? Well, we can, could actually play that just before we go to the G chord. So in other words, I'm going to add that with green color, green color right here. And I'm just going to actually keep it as a D for now because I, I don't want to say, I don't want to decide the quality of the chord yet. I, I'm just, it can be major, it can be minor actually. And that's your choice. That's, that's your ear's choice. It's not wrong to play a, a D major, even though the D major chord is not within the C of key, key of C. Uh, but I'm going to show you how the different uh, qualities sound. So actually, let, let's just play that as a minor chord first and see how it sounds. So I'm going to play that as a D minor. And the melody happens to be sound, sound like this on, these, on, on that chord. So let me just play the song adding that D minor chord before the G7. Here's the song from the top. And then we go, here we, here we go, D minor. You heard that it, it happens to be like a D minor 7 here. I played D minor 7 because the melody is these two notes. So it happens to be a D minor 7 leading to G. So already we have something happening. We add a chord simply by finding the fifth of the chord that we're going to. And the cool thing with the back cycling idea is that we can play the five of that chord. So D is the new chord, right? So we play the five of that D chord. So you just play the D note right here maybe, and then play the fifth of D. One, two, three, four, five. We get to the note A, and the A is the fifth of D chord. So we can play that before. This becomes now two, two chords per bar. So we can play some kind of an A chord before we go into the D. And that's called back, back cycling. So we go from G7, you see here, to back cycling once again to A something. And it could be minor, it could be major. And that, that's up to you to try out. Let's try it out as a minor chord first. I can see that that's actually becoming an A minor 7 because the melody is G. So I'll just play the song once again uh, with that add, a chord added. That's from the top. And here we go. A minor. You could hear. You could play it here as well. So the bass line is now A, D going to G. Uh, so we have back cycle from, 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 from G going all the way back to A. Let, let's continue the same process. Um, let's, let's back cycle once again. So I'm asking you now, what's the fifth, what's the five of A? Okay, so you count A, play the major scale to five, one, two, three, four, five, or just play the, the, the fifth. You get to the note, you guessed it, the E. So we could play an E before the A. We're back cycling once again. Here, we're gonna play an E chord, some kind of an E chord. Once again, you can try major, you can try minor. Let's play minor. There we go, so let's see how that sounds. I'm gonna play it from the top. And here we go. So now we have this progression from C to E to A to D to G. So we have the cycle, right? Just by adding the five of the five of the five, so to speak. So uh, E minor, A minor, D minor, G. 
This is how we can do it. You can also change the quality of, a cor of the chords. Let's do that. I'm going to change. I'm not going to play A minor now or D minor. Let's, tr let's try playing D7 because making it a dominant 7 will lead even it will lead even stronger to the next chord because it's a dominant chord we talked about that in the last lesson called um, secondary dominance and uh, and uh, flat 5 substitution and uh, so that's also free on youtube by the way you can check it out if you don't know what what i, I just did here i just changed it to dominant chords to make it um uh, make it a stronger pull towards the next chord more tension okay so let's see how that sounds from the top <laughs> we go C E minor A minor or a dominance rather D7 to G so now we have kind of three dominance chord chords there a7 D7 to G7 and that sounds totally natural I think it's actually sound better than the original because um, something happens there so let's try it as a finger picking real quick Syncopating the melody a little bit. Here we go. So, a lot of chords there, right? But still very simple sounding, right? And but so much more happens than just playing the C chord all over that. Uh, you know those two bars there. A seven. Dominant, uh, a dominant 7, D7, and it happens to be a D9 because we have the melody here, so to G. That's the progression. And so forth. So there we go. That that's that's what we that's what we can do there. And we can also actually we can if you take a look at the next line there uh, from G7. We could, uh, we, we know we're going to C, so let's play, let's back cycle from C right here and go back to play another chord here. What leads to C? What well, count from C? One, two, three, four, five, we get to the G note, right? So let's just play some kind of a G chord right here. And before G, what's the five of G? Simple, it's D. So we can play some kind of a D chord. Let's just play a minor chord, D minor and G7. So it's you can see we had uh, G7 already, so uh, it, it it's natural to play a G7 here. Uh, G, D minor, let's back cycle once again. We can play some kind of A chord right here, right? Because the A leads to the D chord, and it can be a minor or major. Let's let's play a minor. Oops, let's play a minor seven. So here we go. It sounds like this. Um, I'm gonna play it from the third line and you know, from the C chord to the E minor. So now we have G7, A minor, D minor, to G7, and back to C. So we've used the back cycling idea once again. Let's do it, let's do it again. So from F, where can we back cycle from F? You see this chord right here? Let's use the back cycling, and we play some kind of a chord here. What's the 5 of F? You guessed it, the C. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, C. So some kind of a C chord. Let's play a C dominant seven because that's gonna be make a strong pull. Let's do one more. Let's back cycle from C. What what's the five of C? G, right? We had that before. We can try a G minor here. Just let's try a G minor seven. Because that that happens to be now we get like a two five one into the F chord. We're kind of treating the F chord like a one chord now to get that, you know. Um, change in, in, in harmony, uh, you'll notice the difference. So uh, f f from the third bar, th third line again from C, here's C, G minor. So G minor to C7. To F, it sounds like it sounds like a natural uh, change there, right? I'm gonna play it with finger style. Can, 
it's something like that. Okay, so now we get to the F chord and um, we can back cycle on the next chord as well. So we're going from F, we're going to C in some way, right? So let's back cycle from G. Let's just play one chord here. We can stay, we can play one chord on that bar before, maybe, maybe D7 before the G chord. So let's see how that sounds. Um, here we go to F chord, D7, and that D7, something tells me that you can also, of course, uh, play inversions of chords. I, I like to play sometimes here, maybe we can play instead of D7, well, we play in D7, but let's play a, a different bass note. So we can play F sharp, that's the third in the bass, and that sounds very natural there. Let's see, um, from the line before. G minor, C7, F, D7 with the C sharp in the bass, to G7. Very, very uh, common progression as well. And then we're back. So let's back cycle from the C chord again. So from the C chord, the ending chord here, Let's back cycle and play the 5 of C before. Let's do it two, two chords per bar here. So we back cycle to G, right? The G is the 5 of C. Now let's back, back cycle from G. Count to 5 from G. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. D. Some kind of a D chord we're going to play here, right? And oops, I'm just going to take that away and make it smaller so we can have some space for the quality of the chords. So then we have a back cycle from D. What's the five of D? It's, it's A, right? So we play A right here. Some kind of A chord. Let's back cycle from A as well and just get rid of that G chord. So we back cycle from A to, what's the five of A? It's E. Right? So play some kind of E chord here. And I will play, let's try something. I'm playing a E minor 7. Let's play A dominant 7, D dominant 7, and G dominant 7. Let's see how that sounds. So I'm, I'm going to play from uh, the F chord. I'm going to do this an octave up because it's going to be a little tricky otherwise. So could you hear that uh, E minor, A7, G, D7, and then G7 to C. An octave below is a little bit too low, A7, D7, G7, C. An octave up you can hear it better. But it's the same thing, obviously. Um, and of course, you can do this anywhere. In the beginning, we have, of course, we you can write out the C chords here. We have C every bar, but you can use the back cycling here as well. You're going to C right here, so just just back cycle from that G seven or something, D A. And all of a sudden you have more chords. Let's play A minor, D minor, and G7. So the melody together with the chords in the beginning now sounds like this. It's like a 1625, right? Classic. We talked about that in the last lesson as well. So and that sounds great, you know? then but instead of that we had C G minor C7 
Anyway, so now I'm just fooling around. I'm trying these things that we just did. But this has opened up so much for me when it comes to reharmonizing songs. I mean, we just had three chords before. Look at this. And if you, if you look at this concept and, and apply the, the, the concept that we did the last lesson with the tritone substitutions, if I would use the tritone substitution on line three here, playing a B flat dominant instead of the E, e chord, and keeping the A7 and playing an A flat dominant seven on the D chord, it could sound like this. Um, C7, a C major seven. And the chords are now, you know, into the G7. Same thing here, I could do like this, and then A flat. But that's, you know, that we're getting a little out of it here. Uh, <laughs> it sounds a little bit too weird maybe for that song. <laughs> I wouldn't suggest you do that. But anyway, you could, you could do that. Let, let me just write out the triton substitution on line three so you can see what that's all about, what, what chord, chords I played. Yeah, so that's the chords for that one. Would you use that? Probably not in this kind of style, but it's fun to know that you can actually do that. So, and that's applying the uh, flat five substitution as well to this concept. So, hope you liked this lesson. Let me know if you did. Uh, I'm gonna make more of these kind of lessons. I think it's really fun to explain these things. So, so please try this yourself now. Pick a song like this, three chord song, and just write it out in, in chords. You don't even have the have to have the melody, of course. Just write the chords and then back cycle from the chords to see what you find. I wish you a wonderful day and I'll, I hope to see you very soon. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.